Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you here. Yay! <laughs> Hello, Playbus friends. This week, the Hackney Playbus team is exploring emotions. And we're going to start with a story this week by Joe Watek called In My Heart, A Book of Feelings, which explores many different types of emotions. And it's a good one because it thinks about how the body feels in that moment that you're experiencing that emotion, which is really quite helpful for our little ones because they're still at the stage where they don't really know what this feeling is. What What is it? And one of the best things that we can do as caring adults for our little ones is to help them recognise their feelings and to give those feelings names. Because from there, it's going to be much easier to understand what's going on. Um, so we have some ideas about ways that you can do that with your young children. And do give it a go, even if they're not communicating with words yet, because they'll be communicating with you in, in other ways. Uh, so stay tuned for those ideas and we'll start with our story. Enjoy! My heart is full of feelings. Big feelings. Small feelings. Loud feelings. Quiet feelings. Quick feelings. And slow feelings. My heart is like a house. With all these feelings living inside. My heart feels like a big yellow star, shiny and bright. I smile from ears to ears and run so fast. I feel as I could take off into the sky. This is when my heart is happy. Other times my heart feels strong. I stand up tall as if I can touch the clouds. New people and places don't frighten me. I can do it. Watch me go. This is when my heart feels brave. When I get really angry, I feel like my heart is going to explode! Stay away from me! My heart is yelling hot and loud. This is when my heart is angry. But at the time my heart is cool, I bob along gently like a balloon on a string. My heart feels lazy and slow, as quiet as no fall. This is when my heart is calm. Some days my heart feels as heavy as an elephant. There is a dark cloud over my head and tears fall like rain. This is when my heart is sad. My heart doesn't stay sad. Just like springtime after winter, the sun comes out again. My heart grows tall like a plant reaching towards the sky. This is when my heart feels hopeful. When I see something scary, my heart beats fast. I feel cold, as if a chilly breeze has crawled up my neck and I run away as fast as I can. This is when my heart is afraid. My heart can feel so many feelings. And yours can too. Right now, my heart feels proud, 
How does yours feel? So I've got a game for you now, which you can play with a toddler. And it's a really nice way of having a conversation about feelings, especially maybe more difficult ones when things aren't super tense already. Uh, but it also is a way of just developing a bit of literacy around feelings, both verbally and with words, but also with, with bodies. So the game goes like this. Uh, Hey, I'm going to show you what my body looks like when I'm really happy. Can you copy me? Yay! Woo! Ah, oh, I'm so happy! Yeah! Oh! <laughs> yeah, we can do a dance. Hey, could you pick a feeling and show me what your body looks like and I'll copy you? <laughs> oh, what feeling is this one? Not doing it. I'm not doing it. They're a bit, a bit cross. Like you really don't want to do something. You're feeling quite stubborn. Mm, and I can see your shoulders tense. I think your fists might be clenched. Heads down and your mouth's really sad and stuck. Mm, really nice. Is there anything else you could do? Do I have to? Do I have to? What are you feeling now? What are you showing me with your body now? Oh, someone who doesn't want to, who's maybe a bit sad. Oh, are you crying? Yeah, we cry when we're sad sometimes, don't we? <laughs> so I'm copying your body. <laughs> what about, shall we try being silly with our bodies. <laughs> Book. <laughs> Book. <laughs> Great, so this is a really nice one to try at home at different times of day, whenever you just have a few minutes. Uh, and it can yeah, be a happy way of strengthening a bond with your child and of showing them that you're both prepared to listen to and think about each other's feelings. I hope you have fun playing. way you can use your everyday routine to create moments to talk about feelings with your little ones. What about using snack time as a way to talk about emotions? What have I got in my fridge here? I've got a hard-boiled egg that looks pretty sad. And I've got another one here. This one. This one looks pretty angry. And what about this one? This one has its mouth wide open and its eyebrows raised really high and its eyes open really wide. I wonder how this egg is feeling. I think this egg looks a bit surprised. Something like this, like a little face drawn on a hard boiled egg um, can act as, as a prompt during snack time for a conversation about feelings. Uh, snack time is always a lovely time to have a chat um, and if you've got something like this, this, this can um, focus your conversation on something that's really important. Um, but you can do it in quite a playful, sort of natural way. Um, have a look at the different faces on the eggs and, and ask your little one what you think the egg might be feeling um, and have they ever felt that way before what makes them feel sad or angry or surprised um, you can get them to copy the faces on the eggs as well that's a really good one um, 
and and maybe if you've got a mirror or your camera you can take a photo of, of what your child looks like when they're making that face so they know what they look like when they feel that emotion when they feel sad or angry or happy or whatever feeling it might be um, it's just a nice way to to introduce the topic of conversation and if you don't eat eggs in your house you could try something else like what about Whoop! an orange Give it a go. Hi, I wanted to tell you about something today called five finger breathing and this is a really helpful exercise to help children feel more calm, more grounded and to pay themselves some attention. And all we do is use the fingers on our hand and our thumb to help us regulate our breath. So when we, we trace round the outside of our hand, and when we go up a finger, we breathe in, pause at the top if you want, and then when you go down the finger, you breathe out, up and down, up and down. And having this simple visual cue, cue, cue and the tactility of the finger on the hand can just make something that's actually quite a tricky abstract practice for children into something really tangible and really possible to do. And the advantage of this is that it helps your child pay attention to themselves. Um, but also, yeah, it's very important for anxiety regulation. And breathing in particular is an important part of our anxiety systems. When we breathe in, it kind of makes us more tense more agitated, whereas that out breath is relaxing and regulating. So if you notice that your child is, is agitated, the, the in breath makes them kind of aware of that and connected with it, but then taking a really nice long out breath can, can ground them and bring them back into a calmer state. So it's a nice one to try for adults and children as well. Let us know how you get on with it. Hiya! We've been thinking about ways to help young children learn about feelings and to explore emotions. Uh, and a lovely way to do this is by reading together. Um, there's lots of good children's books out there that focus specifically on emotions. But you can also just look out for moments in any of your favourite stories to talk about feelings. I don't think there's a story out there that doesn't involve feelings in one way or another. So Clover and I are reading this book. Edward Gets Messy, which is about a pig who likes to keep very clean, but he finds that um, he misses out on a lot of opportunities because of this. So shall we read a little bit together? Let's try it. Let's see. On the way to school one morning, 
Edward's friends jump in a big pile of dirty leaves. But Edward doesn't get messy. He walks on the pavement. Look, there's, there's Edward there. And look at his friends, they're jumping in the pile of leaves. What do you think they're up to? Look at this one, he's got a great big smile on his face. He looks like he's having lots of fun. And this one's jumping in the air and he's got his arms stretched out. That looks really, really fun. How do you think Edward feels when he sees his friends jumping in the pile of leaves like that? What do you think? I think he's missing out a little bit. Clover here. I'll tell you a secret. Clover's just a teddy bear. Clover can't really talk back to me. Um, but if I was with a little one, I would give them lots of space so that they could could speak. And I would, uh, I would encourage you to give a little bit of space and time so that they can can tell you what they're thinking. I don't want to put words into Clover's mouth, um, but just, yeah, give a little space for them to think about how how the characters in the book might be feeling, or what would you feel like, Clover? How do you think you would feel if you walked by those pals jumping up and down the leaves like that and you couldn't get involved? I wonder how you'd feel. And just take, take moments in the book to chat about it. You don't have to speed through from beginning to end reading every word in the book. You can take some time to pause and look at the pictures, think about how the story might relate to your life, if you've had any similar experiences, um, and enjoy it. Take some time over it. See how it goes. Enjoy. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're grumpy and you know it, scrunch up your face. If you're grumpy and you know it, scrunch up your face. If you're grumpy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're grumpy and you know it, scrunch up your face. If you are confused, then you know it, scratch your head. If you are confused, then you know it, scratch your head. If you are confused, then you know it, and you really want to show it. If you are confused, then you know it, scratch your head. If you sad, then you know it, go away. If you sad, then you know it, go And you know it, stand up tall. If you're proud and you know it, stand up tall. If you're proud and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're proud and you know it, stand up tall. If you are silly and you know it, make a silly face. If you're silly and you know it, make a silly face. If you're silly and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're silly and you know it, make a silly face. If she's scared and you know it, go ah, ah. If she's scared and you know it, go ah, ah. If she's scared and you know it, and you really want to show it, if she's scared and you know it, go ah. If you're amazed and you know it, make your eyes big. If you're amazed and you know it, make your eyes big. If you're amazed and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're amazed and you know it, make your eyes big. If you're angry and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're angry. special and you know it stand on your head if you're special and you know it stand on your head if you're special and you know it and you really want to show it if you're special and you know it stand on your head thanks for watching in case anyone's wondering why i'm wearing fairy wings it's because i'm feeling playful 
Um, I hope you get a chance to play and have some fun too. Um, sending you big love from everyone at the Playbus team. Take care, everyone. Bye. Two, three. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye, everyone. See you soon.